In this video, I'm going to teach you about transform keys, which you can use to smoothly transform layers from one point to another. To use transform keys, make sure that your layer is set to the transform object by hitting this button here. Then, place a key with the plus icon here. Move through your timeline and place another plus icon. And now, while this is selected, move the layer. As you can see, the first frame is in red, the second frame is in blue. If we scrub through our timeline, we'll see frame 1 until we hit here, and then we'll snap to frame 2. The reason for the snap is because the layer is currently set to step mode. To change this, select one of your two keys and change it to something else like linear. Now, if you play your background animation, it will move smoothly between point 1 and 2. Before adding new positions, make sure to create the frame, and then move the object again. Now, the animation will go from this point to this point to this point, and then back to the last point. By selecting the keys, you can choose different types of interpolation modes, like ease in, ease out, and auto ease in and ease out. You can delete all keys at once by hitting the All Keys button and then hitting the X to delete your frames. Let's animate a bouncing ball. The first thing I want to do is create a frame. And then, I'll advance to 2 seconds, I'll create another frame. This means that on the first frame and the last frame, the ball will return to the same spot. Halfway through, I want to create the up point. So I'll create a frame in the middle. This frame, I'll place up and above the other frame like this. To make it bounce, we'll now select all visible keys and change the interpolation mode to auto ease in and ease out to see how that looks. The animation works, but it's way too slow. To speed this up, we can move the keys. By selecting a key like this and then using the grip button, you can move the key around. Now, we want to loop this animation. This is where things get a little bit tricky. To loop this animation, you need a sequence group. You can create a sequence group with this button here, or you can create a regular group and convert it to a sequence with the checkbox here. Once you have a sequence, you can add your ball animation to that sequence, select the final frame of the animation, select the sequence layer, and set the sequence to loop. These techniques are very powerful, and they actually stack. Let's say we take this new group sequence and put it into a regular group. This group can also have keys. So let's say we want the ball to move from here to here. Let's move to 3 seconds and place another key. Make sure this is selected, and then move the ball over here. Now, while it's playing, the ball will move from here to here while also bouncing in a loop. You can choose to make it linear, so it doesn't ease in and ease out. Let's create another group and call it Scale. In this group, I'm going to change the size of the ball. You can grab the layer and change the scale. This is also controllable as a transform key. Now, we'll have a ball that goes up and down, moves, and scales between point A and point B. You can combine these techniques and create hierarchies to make all sorts of complex animations. Now, let me show you transparency. For the moment, you can only see transform keys while you're on the transform key mode here. By switching to the opacity mode, you no longer see the transform keys, but now, you'll be able to see your opacity keys. To place an opacity key, it works the exact same way, by hitting the key button here. Let's make the ball fade in from 0 to 1 seconds. At frame 0, we want the ball to be transparent, so we can move this visibility slider here to 0. Now, you can see this curve here. That curve indicates that the ball will ease in to its visibility. 
Let's try linear. And now let's try ease in and ease out. You can use this technique to create all sorts of interesting fades for your ball. To show your transform keys again, just switch back to the transform key mode here. And now, with the power of another sequence group, we can loop this entire animation to play over and over. Simply add everything into a new sequence group and hit sequence loop. This approach to animating is much lighter than other approaches to animation shown on this channel that often involve duplicating the mesh multiple times. It also lets you animate all sorts of objects that otherwise cannot be animated, such as images, sound files, and spawn points. The downside, however, is that this animation cannot currently be exported in any way. It can only be used within Quill to make your own virtual experiences within the app.